That's great. So um, that's I think a lot of really uh, great information there from the three from a, our three speakers. Now there's an opportunity for you, the audience, to ask some questions, and I see we've got a few coming in. Might start. We might start with one that I actually had as one of my questions, but from from Jamie from Business Australia and, and Simon, we might uh, direct this one to you. Can you shed any light on your apprenticeship and traineeship programs? Yeah, thanks very much for that, Tim. So um, uh, we've got we've got we've started up a um, a, a trainee uh, a traineeship. Um, we're selecting people from uh, from from high schools uh, and um, also graduates. Uh, to come in to, to work with us and to learn with us. We're doing that uh, initially uh, with, a, with a small cohort that started this year, and we hope to grow that over the um, years and decades to come. We think it's very important for us to ensure that uh, not only are we a great and thriving airport, uh, a catalyst for uh, surrounding Aerotropolis and Bradfield, um, and for, for the thriving hub that that will become, um, but that we are really focused on local jobs and uh, delivering our commitment to local jobs. So um, that is something that we uh, is at the centre of what we're doing. We have targets about at, at each level of uh, through um, construction and through um, operations about how many, uh, what percentage of our team will come from local areas, and uh, we're exceeding that. And even in the bulk earthworks section, which is one of the largest earth moving projects in Australia's history, we're, uh, we're actually at over 50% of our uh, workforce is from, uh, from the local community. So we're really proud of that and it's something we want to continue and evolve and uh, to grow those uh, jobs over time. We might have lost Tim, actually. Do you have anything to add? Have you got anything to add, Angela, to uh, to just in terms of how you're um, looking for uh, you know training opportunities for, for particularly for local people? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. So um, similar to to the work that Simon's doing on the airport, we um, we we do have our targets. They align with the city deal targets, um, but we are working with industry to ensure that we um, are well in a you know in excess of um, achieving those targets. We, we've had some great results on our um, metro project in the southwest, so the, the rail that's heading out to Bankstown, and we're looking at leveraging off those opportunities. So um, at the moment, we've got um, a significant number of um, females in non-traditional trades where we're um, making sure that we're you know, upskilling and, and increasing our Aboriginal um, participation targets. So, um, really excited about getting these contracts off the ground so that we can um, definitely continue to report on you know all of these initiatives coming into fruition. Fantastic. Um, since I've got you Angela there's been a couple of questions about connectivity um, and, and the, the operational um, performance of the metro. Uh, firstly what, what sort of frequency are you expecting to run metro when it opens? Uh, so there's a it's a turn up and go service, so similar to um, the metro product that you've seen in operations on Northwest that you'll see shortly on City and Southwest. Um, there'll be no need for a timetable. It, it truly is a turn up and go service, uh, and it will be fully integrated with other modes of transport. So there'll be um, a well coordinated transport solution that that ensures you know the integration of bus services, the integration of um, Sydney train services and then the metro service as well. Um, the video that we played showed that there was a 15 minute connection period between St Mary's and the airport itself um, and a 20 minute service um, from St Mary's to the Aerotropolis. So i um, really pleased to, to confirm that from an operational perspective we're on track for delivering. And I, I guess you are planning a, a broader integrated transport solution. So there's a question here about how do you how do you um, how does um, areas like the Agri precinct connect to uh, to the metro stations? Is that part of the the, the, the bigger solution? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. Um, so we're engaging um, with our colleagues at at Transport who who will work closely with us to ensure we've got a fully integrated um, system and network so that. Obviously, we're well serviced by um, 
rapid bus if that ends up being the best outcome um, the local bus um, network and and again back to St Mary's not necessarily the agribusiness but back to the Sydney train service and I think we've lost him again and Simon I think most importantly it's great that we're connecting obviously globally through um, the international airport yeah, I think uh, I think that's right. 24/7 uh, connectivity. We haven't had that in Sydney um, before. I think that's going to give us a, a real competitive advantage uh, in the West. And um, uh, I think that the experience of being able to deliver that uh, in a greenfield capacity, which means we'll be a technology-led airport and so the experience will be something I think that will be different than people have experienced before and you combine that with the transport that you're talking about the metro five minutes to uh, to our new city in, in Bradfield I, I think that it's ex extraordinary what's being pulled together here couldn't agree more okay thank, fantastic um, and look there's, there's quite a lot of questions coming through which is great keep them coming I'm not sure if we'll get to them all but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best here um, here's one from Amanda Briscoe from the Western Sydney Business Chamber it's really around um, what, what's the approach to local um, small and, and, and medium in enterprises um, and how do they um, how do they maximize the opportunities for these construction projects we might start with you Anne uh, because you're probably starting to do some of that planning in terms of how uh, local employment and procurement works. Do, do you want to have a crack at that? Yeah, look, um, thanks very much, Tim. And I think um, really uh, that's uh, a primary objective for certainly the Western Parkland City Authority, but um, clearly to one of our objectives as we uh, plan and develop a Bradfield City Centre. So engagement with our local businesses, um, uh, you know, from uh, from the whole range of you know elements of the procurement and delivery um, stream for us within Bradfield will be very very important. Uh, our priorities uh, at the moment um, in terms of our program is obviously advancing our master planning work, and people will see on our website there is a sort of a time frame of um, sort of delivery priorities that we will have commencing over the next um, 12 months in particular next year, and then on for the solid eight years of our construction delivery program. So we are very keen um, to reach out to, to local businesses, um, to grow schools and jobs and I might pick up because we seem to have lost them again. Um, so I'll just say that uh, from, a, from an airport perspective, um, one, we look at uh, contracting with local businesses and we have done so uh, to date. We have targets again for, for local business um, connection. Uh, but, but more than that, we actually are putting it into our contracts so that uh, we're actually measuring and, and managing our, our big contractors to ensure that they are also engaged uh, in the local community. Uh, they're engaged in local employment and they're engaged uh, with um, uh, local businesses. So I think if you've got to be able to um, pass it down through our major contracts and make sure that it's in those contracts as well and that we're managing and measuring that. And Simon, obviously with the, with the um, Metro project, not too similar to what you've described. Um, and I look forward to being able to, well, once it's, once it's publicly available, announce um, who we're partnering with to deliver these three key packages. And obviously the local participation that's been considered in the procurement selection and evaluation um, to, to ensure that there is that great opportunity for local participation. We've got a few questions coming in about the about the the longer term plan for Metro Angela and and I know um, Transport for New South Wales is doing a lot of work on on future rail planning. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give a few high level comments on what you know what the the whole network will look like in in uh, you know decades to come and and how do, how does that help connecting the three cities of Sydney? Yeah, obviously, um, Transport 2056. There's um, great work being done, uh, uh, you know, across government. Um, you know, the, the metropolis of three cities, a well-connected city. Um, there's, there's lots of work can, being considered across government about how to connect people um, through transport in the future. For, for Metro in particular, again, um, referencing the video that we played at the beginning of today's session, talks about. Um, 
you know, a full kind of connected service. So obviously, I love the fact that our project's considered as a stage one. Um, there's a capacity to expand, um, you know, without too much um, difficulty in the north and connect to the existing service at, at Talawong, um, the connection down to the south um, at MacArthur. And then obviously there's full provisions for our project that's being delivered in West um, to extend from West Mead and provide that connection through to the airport and Aerotropolis in the future. So, so it is terrific to see that that future planning up to 56 has been considered um, and we're doing our darndest to make it as simple and easy as possible to make those connections happen. Fantastic. Um, there's also a question here from um, the YARPA Indigenous Business and Employment Hub, which has delivered some fantastic outcomes already for um, Aboriginal um, I, I might just get a quick comment from all of you about um, the commitment to, um, to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, participation, but also the connection to land in, in I guess, all things that you do. Um, I might start uh, with Simon. Yeah, thanks very much for that. Look, our engagement with the local Aboriginal community is very important to us. We're developing a wrap. Uh, it's with Reconciliation Australia at the moment, actually. Um, and uh, I think that's got to be central to what we're doing going forward. More than that, uh, so that's um, about uh, what we're doing with the local community and with our, our, our Indigenous uh, population as well. In terms of employment, uh, it's also about creating a sense of, of place, I think, and uh, it's about people knowing the you know 60,000 year connection with the land that this airport sits on, um, and, and we've got a real opportunity to create a sense of place around that uh, at our airport, and, and that's certainly uh, central to my vision for the airport. Angela. I'm really excited to say that we've put our hand up. We were really eager to put our hand up with a, for the Connecting with Country pilot that's being delivered by the government architect in DPI. Um, the Connecting with Country pilot responds to, um, you know, the, the built form responding to our first generation, our first nations people. Um, so it's not only about um, considering how to ensure there's an employment um, mechanism, but it's about how does the design and the architecture and the infrastructure respond to, to country. I'm really excited to say that we awarded Sydney Metro's first seed salvage um, contract to ensure that we were being really respectful and considerate um, to, to the works that we'll be doing in those lands. Um, so, you know, really trying to embed it in everything that we do. Fantastic. Now, Anne, I've got uh, actually some uh, another question that's probably more relevant to you uh, right now, and that uh, several questions here about what, how, how does the industry get informed of future um, opportunities in the Bradfield city? Is will there be further market sounding as an industry engagement? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Look, there absolutely will be an ongoing program for us of um, engaging with industry and the market around how we proceed with the uh, development of the Bradfield City Centre. The registrar's at the website today provides a, a, an early opportunity for those parties who would like to come forward and say that they would be very keen to engage in a dialogue with us around exploring ideas. Um, and, uh, and, and seeking comments uh, as we build our knowledge and understanding of the best way to deliver uh, this Bradfield um, City Centre as being a global hub and having great aspirations for what this um, delivers for Western Sydney, but also in other context. So um, I would encourage anyone to come forward um, and register their details today, Tim. Um, we will start our market engagement process in November, um, so not um, too long uh, away, and then we'll continue that um, over the course of next year as we lead into um, further opportunities and, uh, and develop our procurement strategy. So um, really, really terrific. But Tim, may I take a minute and respond on the original um, and Indigenous culture because um, Picking up the theme of um, uh, Simon and Angela, I just wanted to reinforce how important that is for us in respect of the development of Bradfield. Um, I've talked a little bit about the first building and our plans for that first building being an advanced manufacturing hub for research and collaboration. 
but it will be an, also a very important uh, flagship building for us and already um, there's been some uh, early thinking engagement. Um, and we'll continue as we do our design concepts for that building. So very much um, for us, uh, building off the great work that Andrew and Metro are doing as well as the airport, um, a very, very strong commitment to be respectful, to acknowledge country and to have early and meaningful engagement and uh, very open to um, the best, you know, ideas around the best ways we should do that moving forward. But I just wanted to reinforce um, the commitment of the WPCA and indeed um, in respect of the Bradfield City Centre, that is a major commitment and priority that we have. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so we're getting close to time now. I've got a time for a couple more questions and maybe this is one for for each of you to wrap up and that is what this is pretty new stuff you know building an airport and and a new city center um, and, and infrastructure that's ahead of time what sort of precedents around the world or what experiences we taken uh, to inform the way we plan these things um, Simon so you're, you're quite right. Uh, actually, um, uh, building a greenfield airport with a greenfield city <laughs> next to it um, is, is not something that's done every day. And there's not uh, great examples around the world, um, even as we speak. There are some uh, being developed there. So there's one airport being developed, greenfield in uh, India at the moment. Uh, I know that Saudi's looking at uh, pretty close to what we're doing. Uh, and we're, we're in touch with all of the uh, areas around the world that are looking at this and are doing the same thing. The other thing we do is we, we've, we've obviously spoken and talked to airports from around the world. We're talking to airlines from around the world about what's important to them so that we make sure that we're addressing uh, those needs. Um, but we're also connecting to um, companies uh, here and around the world that we believe are best practice in what they're doing so that we can take knowledge from outside of just airports and aviation and, and encompass that uh, in a greenfield site. And we believe that's a really exciting opportunity for us as we move forward. It's to learn from the best and implement it here in Western Sydney. Yeah, very, very similar um, approach, Simon. We've been engaging um, with the market to truly understand how we can leverage um, international best practice. We're very clear on what the Sydney Metro product is, and um, we want to make sure that it's you know everyone who who engages with the Metro has a similar experience, irrespective of which sign they're they're using. Um, obviously, we're we're very cognizant and mindful that there is one differentiator on this project, and that is its connection um, back to the airport, and making sure that you know the customer requirement are being considered um, as a part of that operation. So um, we've been, as I said, we've been engaging with um, internationals through, through our market engagement process and re really excited to be leading the way here. Finally, Anne. Yeah, look, thanks, Tim. I think um, I think it, it, as Simon said, there are certainly big challenges for all of us, and, and certainly um, we're at a fabulous time with our thinking about the Bradfield City Centre to take a very broad view to compare and contrast and, and talk to the under who are who are doing um, not dissimilar things. Everyone has a slightly different context and a slightly different um, you know setting and set of objectives, but we have um, immersed ourselves in some. Uh, wonderful engagement with colleagues around the world on, on their experiences and their practices. And and I think the other important point, uh, we're very keen to get a strong message out today is we must very much engage uh, with our market and, and engage with industry to get the collaboration. The investments that government has made for us into the Bradfield City Centre and kick-starting work is really a catalyst for private sector investment. So, we want to bring the best minds together, working with our um, fabulous design teams and others, really collaborating. Uh, we may have lost Anne there. Okay, let's wrap it up now. So for those questions we didn't get to, uh, we'll endeavour to um, respond to those out of session, but I do appreciate um, the participation and commitment from you all on this session today. And I'd also just like to thank our three um, guests um, and I think what you have seen today is that certainly these catalytic investments are in very good hands um, and we wish you all the best um, Angela, Simon and Anne and obviously look forward to 
uh, working with you uh, going forward. Um, and of course, just finally, um, this is the wrap up. And uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of the Western Parkland City Authority, um, we really appreciate your participation today. We can't do this without industry and the community. Um, and I wish you all uh, the very best for the weekend and for the coming months. Uh, and I'd like to hand back to the chair of the Western Parkland City Authority,